Hi, my name is David Heineke and I'm a park volunteer here at Brazos Bend State Park. Uh, during this period when the park is closed and you guys can't make it out here to the park, we've decided to reach out to you guys and connect a little bit with some of our interpretive programs. Today we're going to do one of my favorite programs and that's the Pond Life program out here at Brazos Bend. Uh, when you guys come out here to Brazos Bend, you know that it's one of the best places to come out here and see wildlife. But there's a whole other group of wildlife that you probably don't see out here and that's what's happening underneath the surface of the water out there. So we're going to take a couple of nets and we're going to go out there and scoop some stuff out and bring it up here and examine what all lives underneath the surface of the pond. Uh, there'll be all kinds of little fish and, ver and invertebrates and crustaceans and insect larvae. And these guys make up the building blocks of the food chain that make it possible for almost everything else out here. So we're going to go get some samples and we'll be back with you guys here in just a minute. Okay, we've got one net full of stuff here that we scooped out of the pond and we just set it here on the table and we'll start going through it to see what we can find. So we've taken three or four netfuls of stuff from the pond and brought it up here and sorted it out and this is what we came up with. I mentioned earlier there's a whole other group of wildlife out there that lives under the water and this is just a small example of what lives down there. Different species of sunfish that live out here. This is probably a bluegill or a warmouth and he'll get to be about four or five inches long. Some of the other animals that we caught out here are these little freshwater shrimp. And freshwater shrimp are really numerous and they're really important for the ecosystem out here because almost everything eats freshwater shrimp. As you can tell, they're almost translucent. You can almost see right through their bodies. And as you can tell, they're pretty active too. But they're real important for the food chain out here. Some of these shrimp that we caught today have eggs on them. See if we can find one here with an egg mass. This one right here I don't know if you can tell or not, it has this dark colored shapes down kind of between where its feet are. This dark colored mass right in there, that's the egg case. So this one's about to start reproducing. This is one of the species that we have out here that's real critical to toxins and pollutions in the water. So this is a sign that we have a pretty healthy ecosystem out here at Brazos Bend. One of my favorites are the leeches. And we have a couple different species of leeches here today. So leeches are parasitic, they feed on blood of other animals. So this would be his tail down here and this would be his head up here. And he has a little suction cup on each end. So he'll stretch his body out and stick his suction cup down and then pull his tail up. And stick his suction cup out and pull his tail up and that's how they move along. When you're hiking the trails out here at Brazos Bend, when you see the alligators basking on the side of the trail, take a close look and a lot of times you can see these leeches on them. One of the other creatures we caught in here today, let's see which one we want to look at now. One we don't catch too often is a turtle. And this is called a stink pot turtle or a musk turtle. I don't know if you can see, he has those yellow stripes down the side of his neck. And this is a baby. Uh, they'll only get to be about four inches long when they get to be full grown. And they do live up to their name of being a stink pot turtle or a musk turtle. One of their defense mechanisms is they have some glands on the side of their neck and they release a smelly substance. And that's just one of the ways they protect themselves. So another one, one of my favorites are the dragonfly larvae. 
And this is a dragonfly larva. And it doesn't look anything like what we think of as a dragonfly. Dragonflies start out their life underwater like this, in this larva stage. And they may live like this for several months, and then as an adult for only about a month, and that's it. So when they're in the water like this, the way they breathe is they suck water in their mouth and they blow it out their rear end. And that's the way they move. So they're literally jet powered. Let's see if we can get this guy to swim here and demonstrate that for us. And notice when he moves, he's not moving his legs at all. He's just blowing water out. Now dragonfly larvas are predators and they'll get within about a third of their body length at whatever they want to eat. Then they have this specialized bottom jaw right here. And this specialized bottom jaw is made to shoot out one third of their body length in front of them. So he gets within one third of his body length and in one one hundredth of a second, this bottom jaw called the labium stretches out that far and grabs his prey and boom, right back into his mouth. He's another one in here that feeds a lot on mosquito larvae. If you notice, one of the things that you don't see in here is mosquito larvae. Well, certainly we have mosquitoes out here at Brazos Bend, but we have so many things that eat mosquito larvae that as long as everything is balanced, we don't get too many mosquitoes out here. Now, when this dragonfly gets ready to be an adult, what he'll do is he'll crawl out of the water, usually at night, upon a blade of grass. And you can see this one's already started to get his little wing buds there. And he'll start swallowing air, and that makes his body swell up. And when his body swells up, the skin splits along the back, and then the adult dragonfly comes out, and it leaves behind this exoskeleton. So if you walk around the pond out here early in the morning at Brazos Bend, you may see what looks like dead dragonflies stuck up on the blades of grass and sticks, and it's probably just the exoskeleton from where he shed his skin and flown away. Now one of the other species that we caught a lot today are crawfish species. And just like the shrimp, the crawfish are real important to the ecosystems out here because almost everything eats crawfish out here. We think there's probably five or six different species of crawfish. Some of them don't get bigger than about an inch and a half long. But everything from birds to raccoons to river otters to alligators feed on crawfish out here. Another interesting one is this little guy. And this is called a blood worm, appropriately named. I'm sure you can see how he gets his name. And this is the larva stage of an insect called a midge. And a midge is almost like a little mosquito but he doesn't bite. They just get to be a pest because they get to be so numerous. Another creature we caught today is a fishing spider. And this is the fishing spider right here. And this is called a spotted fishing spider. And they're aquatic. They'll actually use the surface tension of the water to crawl along the surface of the water and grab their prey. They'll also, if there's prey that they want underwater, they'll grab a bubble of air and encase their body in that bubble of air and crawl across under, and, and dive underwater to catch their prey. Let's see. So some other things we caught today. This little guy right here, we're going to grab him with the net. This is one of the reasons that we use tweezers, is there's a few of these things in here that like to bite. And this is one of them right here. And this is called a creeping water bug. He doesn't look like much, but he does have a pretty nasty bite. I don't know if it'll show in there, but he has bright red eyes. Sometimes these things are called alligator lice. If you have a swimming pool in your backyard, these little guys might show up in there. And it would be about like a bee sting or a wasp sting if he was to bite. So let's put him in the water and you can see how he moves. Now as he swims, he actually comes to the surface of the water and grabs a little bubble of air and he holds this bubble of air on his stomach. So then when he's swimming underwater, when he needs a breath, he's got that little bubble of air right on his stomach so that he can take a breath right there. So here's another insect that lives out here in the water. This is called a giant water bug. And he doesn't look much like a giant, I admit. But when he gets to be full grown, he'll be about a foot, I mean about an inch and a half long. And these guys are another reason that we use tweezers when we do the Pond Life program. I don't know if you can see, but he has a piercing, sucking mouth part up there. So he's one of the reasons you don't want to come swimming at Brazos Bend. Never mind the alligators, it's the little guys that'll get you. Another animal that we find in here are these. And these are freshwater clams called freshwater mussels. And they're another animal that's real dependent on a clean, healthy ecosystem. So we wouldn't be finding these in the water system here. And there are several different species of freshwater mussels. Some of these species will get to be three or four inches long. 
And one of my favorites out here is this guy right here. And he's kind of the master of camouflage. When he holds still, he looks just like a stick. And this is called a water scorpion. He's not really a scorpion, he's actually an insect. As you can tell up here, he's got these front grabbers, these front legs that are adapted for grabbing prey, almost like a praying mantis. He does have a set of wings that fold up along his body. And then he has this set of long tubes back here. And these tubes are like snorkels, and that's how he breathes. So he'll swim through the water, and then when he needs to stop and take a breath, he'll stop and come back and put his little snorkel up to the surface of the water, and that's how he takes a breath. See, right there, he just broke the surface, take a breath of air, and you can see how his front legs down here are made for grabbing prey when it gets too close. So every creature in here has a specific niche to fill here in the pond. Some of them are prey, some of them are predators, but they're all the building blocks of the food chain that make it possible for everything else out here at Brazos Pen. So this is just a small sample of who lives out here in the water, some of the wildlife that you don't get to see typically. We hope you enjoyed our pond life program today. Uh, and we hope to see you guys back out here to the park real soon. Keep in mind that you don't have to come to a wild place like Brazos Bend to experience pond life. If you have a lake or a pond or even a ditch in your neighborhood that holds water most of the time, get an adult and a net and a bucket and go out there and do your own pond life program. Thanks for joining us. Please watch our Facebook page. We'll be posting some other interpretive educational programs periodically.